Radiant you team find team. us. All right, guys. Welcome to Dota. We've got Flashpoint here against Saloon 22, and this is in the Learn Dota 2 League. So, for those who are, are unfamiliar with this league, it's uh, actually catered towards the Learn Dota 2 subreddit, which is um, a forum that's kind of instigated towards people learning and getting better at the game. Um, teams are capped at 3.5k MMR, with the average MMR of the team needing to be around 3k. So you're going to see players ranging as low as 2k to as high as 3.5. Honestly, we're going to see a very wide array of skill, and it's honestly going to be a delight of a game to look into. I don't know how much of these teams have researched into each other to know in particular picks or bans that they would want to be worried against, but just some meta heroes banned right now. Flashpoint getting Invoker and Nature's Prophet out of the, or excuse me, Invoker and OD out of the pool while picking up the Nature's Prophet. And uh, Saloon 22 actually a little bit more precarious. They're getting rid of some roaming heroes that they seem to may have some problems with. Right now, the Earth Spirit and the Mr. Bounty Hunter. Now, I love Bounty Hunter. I play him all the time. And I don't really understand why they would do an early phase one ban on the bounty hunter unless they were already anticipating something coming out from the enemy team but leading off with a strong solo support potential but really strong hero into the mid game phase you know eventual spirit single lockdown stun the scream is very strong as well lowered that negative armor too and then, you know, she just pushes up nicely with the team. And we've got a Dark Seer here also, so that is going to be relatively handy. They can use Vacuum to break the trees of Nature's Prophet to get vision on him. Same with the Vengeful Spirit. You can use the Wave of Terror to get vision on that as well, so they could be thinking with that in mind. And uh, Dark Seer is just a relatively big lane bully, and he'll be able to get rid of these summons that are going to be coming from Nature's Prophet relatively effectively in this game. All right, we've got five more seconds left on the banning phase of this next one for Saloon. Actually going into reserve time on it also. Putting a good amount of thought into this with the Nature's Prophet and Oracle being shown for Flashpoint. I, I don't know how often these more inexperienced teams are... I, I mean, Oracle has to be something that they had to have practiced at this point because it is all sorts of crazy of a hero to try and even use in a game. Now we've got to die a team ban. No Spectre. Again, they're getting rid of all of these meta heroes. Invoker, OD, Spectre, Death Prophet. Saloon 22's bans are a little bit more haphazard. They're getting ones of getting rid of ones that they don't like, but also the Drought Push would coincide nicely with the Nature's Prophet and the Oracle if they were choosing to do something with a lot of ranged characters. A lot of pocket strategies. I'm not really sure. These bans are a little eclectic, but... They don't want to go against a, a Drow Ranger, though. We know that. Reserve time. We've got some reserve time again on these bands. Kind of curious that they're having so much time with this. I would really be curious if they would go into, like, okay, we've got a Zeus ban. Huh. All right. Well, that's cool. So the Zeus ban is good against the global potential that you'd be coming out of Flashpoint with the Nature's Prophet Ultimate and the Zeus Ult. They can use the Zeus Ult to get Vision, Nature's Prophet Ult and follow up with it as well. And a uh, little bit interesting how this works. They're setting it up so that they can probably do some sort of pushing early team fight sort of composition with the Venge and the Darkseer here because that's really where they're going to shine. Darkseer is going to really peak in the early to mid game phase of the game and Ancient Apparition is going to entirely negate Oracle's capabilities in these team fights. So that was a very strong pickup and I like it a lot. It's going to come down to where Saloon 22 want to go in terms of their other carry, their other potentials because the Ventral Spirit although can be ran as a core is much more ideally going to be found as a uh, support in this game. And 
Venge and AA together, they're going to have the stun, they're going to have the frostbite follow up, and it's going to be really good. Radiant team pick. And here we are with Flashpoint. Picking up a lion. Lion is great against any sort of illusion heroes because you can use the uh, mana drain to get rid of one illusion. You can use hex to get rid of an illusion as well. He's a really great pickup against uh, a specter or any sort of you know illusion based hero. Reserve time. And uh, the burst potential of finger of death is going to be absolutely magnanimous in these fights because. Vengeful Spirit is going to start the game off relatively squishy, as will Ancient Apparition. They're both going to be squish balls, so it's going to be it's going to be great for them. A swift death, you know, that's that's what you can hope for in Dota, right? A swift death. Now TA has been shown. So they've already given up some of their heavy hitters here. They've got this negative armor synergy that's coming out of Enfil Spirit and TA. So that'll be great for him. A lot of this is going to come down to AA ults with some nice TA traps being strewn about. We're going to have some fun fun synergy of these team fights in the in this game. Now, at a flashpoint, they're really looking for a mid still. They're still looking for a carry. Unless they're looking to run this Nature's Prophet in the jungle. And then the Oracle could be mid. It could be a mid Oracle. This is something that we don't want to rule out. So it could be a core Oracle. And I think that's not something that I was considering up until this point. Um, but with them showing a TA, I don't think it would be an Oracle that you'd want to throw up against them. Actually, does the Purifying Flames... It's a burn, right? So it's a per second. So... Maybe that would be good, because it would break off the Refraction Charges relatively instantly. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know. We'll see what they do. But they opting for a Sven as their roll one. So that's going to be a lot of burst potential in these fights. Really strong. Um, killing that's going to be coming out of him. And again, they've got this really mean stun and follow-up here. They've got the Sven that's going to be able to lead off with a, with a storm hammer off the front line. Lion will be able to follow up with an Earth Spike. And Oracle with the Fortune's End will be able to keep them all taut lead together. And that could be really devastating for them if they are able to follow up appropriately. This Darkseer is going to get forced really far back in the lane, and he's going to be farming just with Ion Shell. And, um... Between Oracle and Lion, they can probably chip off that creep every single time unless he starts doing some double Ion Shell waves. But um, Medusa banned out from Flashpoint, and Saloon 22 getting rid of the Wind Ranger as well. We're going to be looking to go into our last pickup for Saloon 22. And our last pickup from Flashpoint. Now, Saloon 22, they're still really looking for a roll one carry, unless they're going to run their Venge as a carry in some sort of greedy, greedy phase. But they've got a whole 50 seconds in it, so plenty of time to think this over. Personally, I don't know if there's a particular hero I'd like to see. Maybe an alchemist. I just like alchemists in general. I think they could get away with an alchemist, but they're going to go with a Slark. Dire team pick. Slark's nice. I like the Slark idea here. The Pounce is going to be able to disjoint the Sven stun. Or the Earth Spike. You'll be able to dark pack stuff off. Oracle's not going to be able to one-shot you, and you'll be also be able to hunt down the Nature's Prophet, too. It's heal per second, not damage per second. Ten seconds remain. On the Purifying Flame. Alright, and it is going to be a support Oracle, with the Queen of Pain as the carry. Or, excuse me, the mid. Prepare for oh, I can't click through the minimap? What is this crap? Or the unit portraits? What the? What the, is this crap? 
This is what I get for clicking on camera, man. I should not have done it. Because now I can't... Oh, I can't click through the mini-map? What is this crap? Or the unit portraits? What the what the, is this crap? <sighs> this is what I get for clicking on camera man. I should not have done it. Cause now I can't. <sighs> Fucking fuck. All right, I gotta I gotta restart this shit. Um, this is absolutely terrible. Okay. That wasn't it. All right, we can click through the minimap now. Splendid. All right, so um, no contestants coming off, and um, here we go, right into the game. We've got Ancient Apparition, who's now found Sock Savage out of position. He's going to be hit with the storm, uh, with the bolt immediately off the back, but we've got no follow-up coming out of AA. No touch or anything. Wait, what? Okay, yeah. No f no cold feet. Choosing to not skill up there at all. Um, Jeez. hate when that happens. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these matchups here. We've got Burra Hobbit here in the bottom lane as Slark. Sock Savage already in a bit of a predicament here. Here comes a stun and a follow-up, and there's an easy first blood going the way of Saloon 22. So I didn't, I didn't get the opportunity to call out these teams here. So we've got Ooh Camouflage here on the Sven. Fedorable on the Lion. Noob Shit on Oracle. B Cipher for the Radiant on the Darkseer. In the pool on Queen of Pain. Ethan on the on the Templar Assassin. Dinosaur on Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Seranos on Ancient Apparition. And um, yeah, back to Sock Savage on the Nature's Prophet. Okay. So a lot of this game is going to really be predicated on this mid lane. This mid lane matchup is going to be absolutely a huge, huge deal for both teams here. Um, Queen of Pain is going to net, really need to get some good farm here. And also bully, her, bully out the TA as well. An early sentry ward would really help out the Quap, because dropping that on the mid lane, making it so that she's not able to do any sort of bel meld shenanigans is going to be good for her. And right here, TA actually could have pressured her a lot more with a couple more right clicks, force out a blink or something like that. And uh, just choosing to go for the top rune, I'd really like to see that TA being much more aggressive with the refraction, especially if the Quap is using the Shadow Strike to last hit. Alright, some pinks coming out from bottom. Sock Savage. Is he overextended right now? Burra Hobbit's going to be getting some chip damage in on him. Just poking him a little bit, letting him know that it's alive. And in the pool, taking some really heavy right clicks here from Dinosaur. Dinosaur's not going to be able to take him out. Ethan looking on the pursuit, and it's not really there. But I'm really expecting this tri lane to be able to zone out Cypher a little bit better. Or at least capitalize on the fact that him... Oh, he blocked the pull camp and they haven't countered it yet. Oh no. That's not really good for them. But uh, if Cypher rolled out with a little bit more mana regeneration, he'd be even more of a nuisance in the lane right now. So here we are. Cypher is now sitting up here, just kind of not getting zoned out at all, which really should be happening. And, oh, jeez, I just missed a kill. But meanwhile, across the map, Sock Savage is in a bit of position, too. And he's going to fall. Slark actually getting a double kill off of that. Absolutely ridiculous. These rotations are not coming out very well for... <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a hiccups. Um, for <laughs> NA... For NA Solo 18. Jeez. 
The murder is happening. The murder is happening. Ethan is pressuring this Queen of Pain relatively highly. I'd like to see Quap using her her spells a little bit more effectively to try to get some harassment down with that Q. You know, get that Shadow Strike down on her, burn out the refraction, try and chip off more right click damage too. But again, taking really heavy harassment, she's going to be forced out of lane. Uh oh, what's going on in the top lane? Cypher, he's in a bit of a pickle. He's going to get right click down and noob shit, taking some heavy damage, but he'll be okay in the end. Oh no. Absolutely ridiculous. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. See, this mid matchup has been relatively strange. Just watching in the pool, last hitting here, as Ethan just kind of runs back and forth. And if we're looking CS wise, like, Ethan is winning. And he's pulling out the Quap relatively well. But Quap's kind of just running around. We need to get a little bit better farming coming out of him. And oh, he's getting some really heavy pressure off. That's what you really need to be doing there. Use that haste rune to run around and be a nuisance. I love it. So Sock Savage here, sitting at around 600 gold, and he's going to try and look to steal this creep camp that's been stacked up just a little bit by Serranos. And he might actually be able to pull it into the wave here, so he'll look to try and get some of that that gold farmed up. And with this ward that he's dropped back here, is this does this block the camp? I think it should. I mean, you can see the spawn boxes now, but if it does block the camp, then there's already it's already a single stack anyway. So it looks like Nature's Prophet just ended up pulling this camp in order for the uh, the Radiance to farm it a little bit easier. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, noob shit rotating around here. We've got three now lined up in the middle. They're looking to maybe apply some pressure here on Ethan. Ethan knows that Fedorable is rotating around. Here comes the Hex. The FP in the pool is going to follow up with the Shadow Strike. And with the mana getting sucked down... Quap actually doesn't have enough mana to follow up with an ultimate. There's no big screams, no big spells. We have just really a slight bother of a moment. And Ethan might be able to actually pressure out Fedora here. Just a couple more right clicks and he's actually going to fall. But he disengages. And now in the pool is turning the tide on him. He's got the Shadow Strike on him. He's following up with a few hits here. Blinking forward. There's the scream. It's not going to be able to connect. Here comes the... Oh no! Dinosaur is immediately in there on point and in the pool is going to fall. Sock Savage here. He's got his boots. And he's going to be able to do some heavy damage here. Noob shit's getting zoned out just casually with a little bit of a frostbite coming out from the Ancient Apparition, but no big deal. Fedorable, meanwhile, on the top. This is a sad line, 0-0 zero, zero at uh, 7 minutes in, 9.54. PPD style over here, guys. Or at least that's what we'll say. And, uh, ooh, Camouflage has been farming no way relatively well. 30 last hits, 12 denies. Um, Burr, though, he's got a bit of a lead on him, and part of that's because... He does have a little bit more CS, which isn't even the biggest of it, because he has these hero kills, too. Uh, 2 0 and one you know? That's going to be huge for him. Even though this friend did have an impact in one of those fights, it's not going to be enough. And uh, Noob should actually going down again to Burra Hobbit. I think they might need to change up their landing situation here, otherwise it, it's going to be in a bad spot for them. And Was Camouflage considering going in on Cypher here? His ultimate popped. Maybe. Do, 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 do. Uh oh, stun coming out on Fedorable with the Frostbite as well. But he's going to be able to fall here, and Sock Savage again is forced back in the lane. Honestly, I think it's at the point where Sock Savage should just give up the lane and jungle. Get that farm coming in. He needs to do something a little bit more better. Great, great grammar. Great word choices. More better. Um. He needs to increase his gold intake, and in the lane, it's not happening. I don't know if he's really doing as much as he wants to, because Slark, he's got his Midas at this point. Eight minutes in, sitting on 3,600 net worth. 
He's going to be following up with some bigger items relatively shortly, and he's just going to become a terror. Alright, well, Dinosaur is rotating around. He's getting tickled a little bit by Fe uh, Fedora Bull, and with a little bit more harassment coming out, he's going to get zoned back. And uh, that's about it. Away he goes. Meanwhile, on top lane, Cypher, he's just being a nuisance, dropping those uh, ion shells as best as he can. No double ion shells right now, so he's actually doing pretty well in terms of getting his own last hits, but he's trading relatively easily with Ooh Camouflage because he's able to stay in the midst now. He's got the Morbid Mask, he's relatively tanky now with the treads. He's got a Mango, so that's a cool thing too, right guys? Hell yes. So item timing wise, we're going to be looking for some big ones to come out here um, probably in the next like five to six minutes. Um, if we're taking a look at everybody's items across the board, we see that Darkseer is going to be slowly working towards a mech. As previously mentioned, Burr Hobbit has his Midas. And then, um, you know, just some basic support items coming out here. But uh, from the opposite team, Camouflage is going to be looking towards his Mask of Manus and then, you know, just boots for everybody. Everybody getting boots, but <clears throat> Darkseer mech is getting relatively closer, so that's good. And uh, it looks like they caught off Adorable. He's going to just fall. Sock Savage will be able to TP out in the last second. He'll be okay. Big rotations coming out of Ethan. And now in the pool needs to capitalize on this and get some, get some, get all the CS. Put this lane out. Go to the jungle. Farm up some stuff. Become a terror, man! You can do it. But uh, three points in Shadow Strike is generally not going to be an ideal build when you're playing as a Quap. You want to try and get all the burst damage out as fast as you can. And meanwhile, Fedorable in the bottom actually getting caught out with a pounce stun combo and just a quick couple lashes from Ethan too, and that's really all it takes. Oh, jeez. God, no. Again, what? What? I was just there. I missed. Why'd they come back? Oh, no. Ethan is starting to become a menace. He's got 2,000 gold. We could be seeing a Blink Dagger come out of him relatively shortly, or even better yet, a super fast Desolator. Get some armor, negative armor coming in, or armor penetration if you're newer to the game, and that's going to allow them to just kind of shred people up because... The spell that uh, TA has here, armor reduction had on it. They got the Vengeful Spirit with the Scream that has armor reduction. And then they get that as well. They're really going to be snowballing. But TA opted for the Blink Dagger in this case. So she's going to be looking to apply pressure by blinking on top of people, initiating, and just causing havoc. And then this Slark is going to keep on snowballing on the back end. In the pool. He is top. So basic brown boots are, aren't going to give you any uh, damage at all. Um, then you can upgrade them to something called treads. And then you can switch them between having either strength, agility, or intelligence with them. If it's on your primary stat, it's going to give you 9 damage. It'll by default always give you 45 move speed or 25 attack speed. Then there's another pair of boots that was just picked up by Lion, actually, that I'll talk about. Where are you at, Lion? Lion, you're over here. And now you're TPing top. So they're called Tranquil Boots. It's kind of a more support or a jungler boot. Um, it makes it so that if you don't attack anything, you get health regeneration and bonus move speed. So you get some really crazy health regen and movement speed if you don't attack anything. So you can attack some creeps and then use it to heal up while you're running around in the jungle. But that doesn't give you any... Um, any attack damage. It just gives you armor and, and HP regeneration. And then there's phase boots, which uh, I don't know if anyone in the game has. TA may have? TA should probably have. Nope. Treads. 
Uh oh, Big O coming out to Ancient Apparition up top, and Fedora is gonna take a couple hits, and he's gonna go down the screen, actually finishing him off. Noob shit with a great shackle in on three, purged off immediately, but Big Screen coming out in the pool now in a bit of trouble. He's gonna jump back. The trees, the sprout is off, but in the pool, he's gonna die. Sock Savage getting vacuumed back. Cypher's gonna continue the pursuit, and Noob shit's gonna try to throw out the shield and help him out, but it's not gonna happen. Oh no, he threw the shield out on a creep, and then he's gonna fall too. All four of them have fallen. Ancient Apparition, though. Being the divine savior across the map, big ult coming out, and what a fight! Huge 2000 experience swing, 1300 gold going all the way of the uh, Radiant, and the lone survivor Sven across the map, farming away, just farming away, farming, farming away. We've got a pretty demanding lead going the way of uh, Saloon 22, almost 10k at this point. They're at around 8 right now. And, jeez, what do you do if you're FP in this point? You, f you fall back, you farm up these Ancients, you continue grouping around as a team, but you need to look to get some kills, you need to pressure them. You cannot let Saloon 22 be the ones to take the fight to you. You have to bring the fight to them, and that's not happening right now. Oh no, in the pool! He's gonna fall, Ethan, able to shred him out. Oh no. But Sock Savage, he's trying to farm up in the jungle. Nature's Prophet's so far behind at this point. And farming out power treads on agility. Oh no. <coughs> Darn it. Is he going to heal that creep up so much that he can't kill it? Oh, we used this spell twice. Oh no. He healed it. He fully! Oh god, he... <laughs> Jesus, this is... That is great. Ethan with the Blink Dagger halfway towards his Desolator at this point. Casual meld to make it so that noob shit spell didn't hit him. So this Fortune's End, it needs to hit the hero, but then does like a little AoE around him. So you can just meld away and then have it not hit you. Uh-oh, is Ancient Apparition going to make it? Nope. Big Snow. It's a frosty fellow, but it didn't work for them this time. So right now, I'd like to see uh, Saloon 22 actually take a Roshan. They could easily do it. I mean, they could wait till the Desolator pick up on the TA, but it would be an easy Roche for them if they chose to. Even right now. A has the Midas. He's going to be starting to get some farm coming in. And we're going to be seeing that Aghanim's picked up by, like, the 25-30 minute mark by for him. And that's going to be great. AA should really just TP out. Uh-oh. With Fedorable following up on him, he's going to try and just get anybody at this point, and he's going to just immediately go down. And noob shit... He's just gonna watch Fedorable take damage. He uses a salve! Oh, it does. It does save him. It does save him. So, if you didn't already know, um, if you get hit by Ancient Apparition's ultimate, it makes it so that all healing is negated. So, even him using that salve on himself was not healing him because the AA ult was on him. It elapsed, and then it was working after that. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. All right, here we go. Jeez, big AA ult coming out, and they're not going to connect on anybody. Fedorable. He's getting actually swapped back in. Dinosaur doesn't have enough mana to follow up with the stun, but Ethan is going to play again with the meld hit strike. So much damage, but not enough to, f to kill him off. Dinosaur throwing out a casual scream to let Fedorable know he's alive. Oh, Jesus, Ethan just two shots him. And they're going to follow up on him now. Surge is going to help in the pool with the Frostbite on. He's going to be able to blink out of that, so he'll be okay. And I think they'll be able to pressure this tower now. They could just finish up this Deso, take Roche, and then end the game, realistically. I don't know if AA has used this Midas yet. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Illusion. 
Nature's Prophet has the drums now finished. So that'll be very helpful for trying to push up in these team fights. But in the pool, going for the 3 3 3 build on Queen of Pain, not really maximizing the skills at this point. You want to make it so that you get your scream online at level 4 as fast as possible, it increases your farming speed, and makes you have the maximum amount of AoE damage output as early as possible. Ooh, camouflage. Farming away, Saint Yasha. I think he's going to be able to be... What's it going to come down to? It's going to come down to some great initiations realistically out of the out of the dire end. They need the lion to start these off. Or it, it needs to be the Sven on the front line and I'm just waiting for this fight to get taken. This next fight is going to be so huge cuz Sven has been keeping up. He's been farming away. But at the expense of his entire team though. And oh jeez, they were able to pick up the Queen of Pain again. That 4 protect 1 strat. Is it really paying off for the Dire? That's a big sacrifice to make. It's a big sacrifice. Because if you're looking at this gold spread, we're over 10k now in Salute 22's favor. Oh jeez, and every single hit hurts so much. Adorable. Just absolutely squishy. And he's not able to do much. He gets hit by that one stun. One stun! And then that's over half his HP. And he needs to go back and heal. Sock Savage still farming away. And they use Shadow Strike to kill that creep that had the Ion Shell on him. Nice and quick. I think Nature's Prophet's had it on agility boots for most of the game. Ethan is now just split pushing and applying some really heavy pressure. Using the Desolator to do some armor penetration on the buildings. And that's great. Oh, they got, they got Dinosaur. Oh, but was it bait all along? AAO coming out in the pool. He's been hit. Fedorable is now fallen. Oh no, Burra Hobbit. Are you going to get everybody? I think he's going to. Camouflage has just got the fortune's end on him. And Sock Savage, he throws out the sprout, but it's not going to really do much. Oh, big ult coming out of in the pool. Able to take out Burra Hobbit and like 1,100 gold? Jeez. Going for that Orchid now. And Nature's Prophet actually going to be able to get a kill here. But Ethan, he wants blood. He wants his friends avenged. He's able to take out two. And oh no. It's a disaster. I don't know how big of a disaster that was. Not that big of a disaster. Alright. What was the gold switch? Yeah, not that big of a disaster. But still, unfortunate. Down goes the vision. Oh, we got some BM coming out of Ethan now at this point. Two-shotting him and, oh, just a casual oops, too. So, like, hey, it's no big deal. It's only, uh, yeah, that's a pretty big gold swing. My fault. Stay classy. Aw. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Alright, so from some farming coming off here. Ooh, camouflage. This four protect one strat. How well is it working? Mr. Camouflage, we want to see you join these team fights and have a crazy, crazy input in these fights. He's going for that blink dagger, I would suspect at this point, but the Helmet Dominator, they used it to stack up a little bit, but I think they've kind of neglected now in the in this phase. They're just getting tunnel vision on just continuing the farming, trying to get these lanes pushed up, and they're really just holding on. Serranos. 
Get out of that point pusher soon. Work towards that Ags. And Burr Hobbis is going to keep on farming away. Aw, oh, man. Murder. Population Ultimate Orb. And oh man, are they finally going to find this Sven? Oh, they're going to go in on him! Big AA ult's going to come out, it's going to connect on three, and Fedorable's going to get stunned out, she's immediately dead, all of this healing is going to do nothing! Absolutely nothing! Oh, and he's going to fall to the Ancient Apparitional! Going to finish him off the threshold, he explodes! Oh no! That is just absolutely destructive! Dinosaur now getting a double kill here! Ancient Apparition falling. Oh. No. Everything is just coming up Millhouse, man. 14k plus at this point. Getting up almost, almost to 15k in Radiant Favor. Noob shit doing as much as he can. Spamming out fortunes and then trying to get these last hits. Trying to get the creep pulled off of the tower. But. It's an easy Roshan first. For Saloon 22. Absolutely. What are they going to do now? Burra Hobbit? He's just going to push the lane. They're going to look to have this Scotty online on him very soon. He's leading the charge with his CS. Hasn't used any of his jump charges though. I would like to see him use some jump charges. Ooh, a team Vlads for the aura and damage lifesteal and stuff. Whoo! Delicious. Sock Savage with the Shadow Blade and Drum now online. That's good. So he's going to look to try and split push out a bit. And they're just countering the same spot back and forth over and over again. You'd think that someone would flinch and place the wards in a different location, but this is a pretty coveted spot at the same time, though. Doo -doo -doo. Cypher blinking forward. He's got his Guardian Greaves online now. That's absolutely ridiculous. And oh, there's the Manta now for TA as well. Ayo oh, coming out. It's not going to connect. But Slark, he's going to be able to jump on Fedorable on the back end. And, and the pool is going to immediately get bursted down. But it's not going to be enough. And oh, Camouflage. He's going to take so much damage. The right clicks are out there. Absolutely huge. Serranos, he's going to go in with the right clicks now also. And Camouflage, he's trying to chunk away, but he's going to die in the back end. And in the pool, blinking backwards, Burra Hobbit trying to leap forwards. And Oracle is now going to fall. And Ethan, he's just being absolutely destructive. He's just murdered everybody with a giant triple kill. Oh, man. Well, then we've got the GG. Mistake. Genuinely. GG, 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 GG. 26-42, and game one is going to go away of Saloon 22. Big victory here for Saloon 22, taking this game very decisively, under 30 minute game, and this whole game was really all about TA. TA was able to get that Blink Dagger early, Snowball with a few kills, the Desolator followed relatively shortly after that, and at that point it was just, it was far too gone. FP was rocking for the 4 Protect 1 strategy, and it just wasn't able to capitalize enough for them, because they weren't able to get the kills in the fights when they really needed them most. So... Great job to Saloon 22, and with that, we're going to go back, we're going to go into our next game.